All right, Chief Garcia, thanks for uh, taking the time, especially uh, on, on Christmas Eve. Do appreciate it. Um, first off, I, you know, the first question I want to ask is, is just your, your reaction to, to getting this, this assignment. Oh, I'm humbled. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, I feel like uh, Christmas came a few days early uh, for me. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting started. Uh, just very exciting. What do you think about your interview? Do you think stood out and, and kind of made the difference? Oh, you know, I, I don't know specifically what came out and made the difference other than, uh, you know, I've been a police chief for you know, five years in, uh, in the 10th largest city in the country. And so there's a lot of, lot of successes that, that, that we've had as a department collectively. There's a lot of areas uh, where we have learned and things that we can do better. Uh, and so I feel that bringing those to Dallas um, uh, will, will, will better, make us better, uh, that people can learn from our successes and from the mistakes. Uh, and both uh, are important. What about the Dallas job interested you? You know, it's interesting, and I know this sounds, this sounds corny, uh, so I'll get into the story here a little bit. But, uh, you know, I've had, a, I've had a connection with the city of Dallas for a long time. Uh, I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan. I've been to Dallas on several occasions, many occasions, actually, uh, to see the city, been in the city. Uh, I love the diversity of the city. Uh, reminds me a lot of San Jose in a lot of ways. And, you know, I had conversations as being part of Major City Chiefs Association with other chiefs, and I always said that, you know, if the Dallas uh, opportunity ever opened up, that, I, that would be something I'd definitely be interested in. Uh, so out of every, any other major city in America, I feel the most connection to the city of Dallas. And so uh, it was something that, that I just felt uh, that uh, was something that, that I needed to try to do. A community survey that went out uh, during the hiring process for the city, you know, identified the issues that are most, uh, you know, top of mind for, for people who live here. You know, the top two were, you know, a police chief who can lower crime and, and build community trust or improve community trust amongst uh, the entire community. Are those the top two in your mind? And, and if not, what are the ones that stand out for you? Well, I'll be honest with you. Those are the same ones we had in the city of San Jose. Uh, I, if you spoke to any from a recruit to a senior officer, they know that we had two overarching goals and these can be used in any uh, department. And that is to make our community safer, take the criminal element off of our streets, and at the same time, build stronger communities. They don't want us to go away. Uh, they just want fair policing. And those two concepts are not mutually exclusive. And so those ring true to me because that's how we tried it. That's how we practiced uh, the law enforcement that we did in San Jose, uh, that we can do both. Uh, no one supports uh, their men and women that sacrifice every day to keep our streets safer more than I do. And at the same time, I'm fully understanding of the fact that our communities uh, want to be treated fairly. Uh, and want to see us uh, move the needle professionally, uh, not just in Dallas, but as a profession. Uh, so I'm a fully keen, I'm keenly aware of both those concepts, uh, and I like to think that that's what I stand for. Obviously, every community is different. A lot's been made of, you know, San Jose being the tenth largest city, Dallas being the ninth largest. There's, there's, you know, similarity in size there, but there's a, a lot of demographic differences, at least as it relates to, you know, crime, violent crime in Dallas. You know, this year and the last and last year have been you know, much higher than in early part of the decade and certainly higher from than the agency you're coming from. Yeah, but, you know, every city is different and has their own challenges. Uh, you know, in the city of San Jose, uh, we have to do a lot. We're a very lean police department, so we have to do a lot collectively, not just with rank and file, but with partnerships in our community, with the support of our city hall and our city leaders. Uh, and that's no different. That, that overarching concept is no different than, than what we'll have to do uh, in Dallas. We'll have to be strategic. We'll have to be data-driven. Uh, to ensure that the, the areas of need uh, are, uh, are, are top priorities for the department. And so, uh, you, know, you know, we'll be out in the community. I'll be out in the community. When I say we, we'll be out. My command staff will be out in the community. Uh, I'm not a stay in the office kind of chief. I will be out learning. Uh, I'm eager to learn uh, and I want to learn. I know that I will love, I'm going to fall in love with the city of Dallas uh, more than I already have. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, obviously, we got, gonna we're going to roll up our sleeves. Uh, we've already started conversations. We've already started conversations with some of the command staff. We'll be reaching out to them hopefully next week. We'll be reaching out to the rank and file as well uh, very soon uh, in, in some sort of platform. And we're going to roll up our sleeves and be ready to go and go do this thing. I was going to say, before, you know, you're not in the position yet, so I don't want to ask too many questions along those lines. But what do you see as – strengths already identified within you know the police department or things that you know you from a culture standpoint that you would want to look at 
Uh, well, you know, I've, trust me, I've done a lot of homework. Uh, I know the heart and soul of the men and women of the DPD, uh, both sworn and civilian, uh, that work extremely hard, uh, that want to make their community safer. You know, obviously going through this, uh, this process uh, in the last, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, you know, I've seen some strengths uh, from some of the command staff that's there. Uh, and so we're going to be working as a team together. Uh, you know, I've been a police chief and I've had almost 30 years of law enforcement. I've been a chief uh, for five years and this is going to be a team effort. Uh, my hope and my goal really is to get us all rowing in the same direction uh, and to ensure that I've done my part to develop the next chief of police from inside the organization. And so uh, I see a lot of strengths. Uh, we just got to make sure it's not just getting the, it's just not getting the right people on the bus, it's getting the right people in the right seats. Uh, and that's the good to great type of mentality that I think we are going to have collectively in the DPD. I know during last week's interview, you, you mentioned in that public setting, you know, policing, you know, here is not broken. And that's maybe in response to some people who've, you know, uh, aren't as optimistic about, you know, the situation in Dallas. Kind of what you're talking about is that kind of lend into that, that idea of you just- Well, absolutely. You know, there was, a, there was an article that I had read uh, with, regarding uh, some South Dallas uh, pastors coming together uh, and talking about the need for law enforcement, fair policing, but they wanted law enforcement. Uh, and that's a precious gift that, unfortunately does not exist in every city in America right now. And so you have to take that gift, treat it as it is, uh, and build from that. And that's why, you, that's why I can make those comments that it's not broken, um, that there's opportunities and there's some solid foundations to build upon. Uh, don't wanna do like a 100 days type thing, but are there things you have in mind that you'd like to, you know, check off if you can in you know, the first, you know, weeks or months that you're here? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to pass the TCOL test uh, and be Texas uh, certified so that I can be in uniform the first day uh, that I address uh, the men and women of the DPD. That's my number one goal right now. Uh, two, concurrently working, working in these next uh, you know, 35, 40 days that I have is really I'll be doing a lot before I even get on the clock. Uh, you know, I'm not going to wait till February 3rd to start at least having an idea of things that I'm doing. And so I'll be doing that before I get on the clock. Uh, you know, I got to get a, a command staff, um, talk to my command staff, get a command staff in order and in place and have some ideas there. Uh, I need to ensure that, uh, that we're going to start working on uh, some violence reduction plans. Uh, I got to make sure that I've reached out to the rank and file um, so that the first time they hear from me is not on February 3rd uh, and, and start from there and build a solid platform uh, to let the men and women know the DPD that I will be an extreme supporter of their service, that I understand their sacrifice, that we're in this together, uh, what their goals are, what the plans are, uh, and let's get uh, and let's get going. Let's get this going in the right direction. Yeah, obviously you're not going to be sworn in until February 3rd, but are are you already in kind of the mental space of being the police chief of Dallas as we stand right right now in late December? I think you have to be. Um, you know, I think I know the expectations, uh, especially now, uh, are very high, uh, and uh, there's not too much of a honeymoon period. And so I would be remiss if my mindset from today going forward wasn't that, that I have to have those ideas in place, uh, that I have to work collaboratively because I'm not there yet. Uh, but the, the reception that I've received from the command staff there already has been tremendous. Uh, and I have no doubt that we're going to do this together and uh, we're going to roll up our streets and get to work. One thing you mentioned in your, in your interview uh, was the training video that, new recruits in San Jose Police Department go through to learn about the history of policing. Um, is that something you saw from another department? How did you arrive at that? And then do you think that's something that's uh, maybe more large city police departments are considering, um, you know, currently? Uh, you know, I think I would, we were the first uh, in the country to do something similar to my understanding. And the way it came about was just simply me watching the Netflix movie, The 13th. I remember a few years ago watching the movie The 13th, uh, and although, you know, there's some, you know, I would have a, we would have some discussion, I'd have, I could have some discussions with, with, with the makers of the movie about certain elements. The one thing you can't argue is the historic uh, perspective that they offer. And I remember watching that movie, and then after that, uh, realizing that, you know, when I started as a 21-year-old uh, police officer, uh, I didn't know that context. You know, I didn't realize uh, the historical nature, the original sin that we're born in as police officers. Uh, doesn't mean, uh, you know, that, that we don't support the sacrifices that our men and women make, but we have to acknowledge the mistakes we've made in the past. 
And I feel that has helped uh, our communities at least understand and realize, okay, we, that, we, that we've taken ownership. And so I teamed up with San Jose State University and we came up with a class that all our recruits see now on the, on the negative. When we talk about the history of American policing, it's more of the negative history of American policing as it pertains to our communities of color. Just so that our officers have an understanding that just wearing your uniform doesn't just give you respect, uh, that you have to work harder in some communities than others, and that's just reality. Uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to be out in those neighborhoods. It doesn't mean we're not going to take the criminal element off the street. It just means that we get a better understanding as to why that distrust exists, and I think that's pretty powerful. Chief, I know we've been you know, covering the, the search process pretty extensively over the last couple of weeks. Um, for those who see the story who maybe is the first time they're seeing your face and hearing from me. What, what do you want to let people know in Dallas who um, you know, maybe haven't seen much up until this point about um, what they can expect in February? Well, uh, you know, I'm not a stay in the office kind of chief. Uh, we're going to be out there. Uh, you're going to see a lot, uh, you know, a lot of myself and a lot of the command staff. And we're going to work together uh, to get this thing done. Uh, I, I bring some experience uh, with me uh, that, uh, you know, that, that I think will, that I know will benefit uh, the department in the city. Uh, I've had a great support from the city manager and uh, city council members and the mayor. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna team up, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this together. And uh, I'm gonna take things personally. Uh, we will all take things personally, uh, but we'll be a team. Uh, and that's how I'm gonna look at this job, uh, you know, and, uh, and keep working hard at it. Um, it's certainly gonna be something that I'm excited about. Uh, and. Uh, and I, and I believe uh, the city of Dallas will be better for it. Being the first Latino chief is certainly uh, a, a something that's been discussed here uh, as being you know, significant in the history of Dallas. How significant is it to you? Well, you know what, it's been significant to me ever since, uh, you know, I was in San Jose. You know, I'll tell you this. Uh, there's a story that, that I told when I was appointed chief in San Jose in 2016 where, you know, we came to San Jose. I didn't know how to speak English. I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico and learned to speak English there. And there was a period of time when my sister and I were in school, just learning English. And they would ask, they, my mom went in one day to ask a teacher how we were doing. And the teacher said, well, they'll never be at the front of their class, but they'll be okay. And I remember looking at my mom when she stood in the audience when I first, uh, you know, when I first was appointed chief in San Jose. And I said, mom, I think we made it to the head of the class now. Uh, and so, you know what? I mean, coming over, uh, I just believe really for me or anyone else, it doesn't matter what you look like, what language you speak, uh, the color of your skin, uh, religious beliefs, uh, sexual orientation, wh whatever, that anything is possible here. Uh, that don't let anyone tell you different. Uh, don't let anyone uh, tell you that you'll never be at the head of the class. And so to me, it's significant for Latinos, obviously in Texas and in Dallas, uh, but it's significant for all of us that may have been strangers uh, here at some point and felt like strangers at least, uh, that anything's possible. And so that's a significance for me. Chief, what have I not asked that, uh, that stands out that maybe you want people to think about? I'm sorry? What have I not asked you that you think stands out that maybe you want some folks to, to think about? Uh, no, just uh, I feel a connection to Dallas. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I just feel the stars aligned, uh, and I'm really excited for the possibilities, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and I can't wait to, to get at it. Maybe the next 30 years of uh... – Cowboys football be better than the, the last 25 or so? Uh, I tell you what. Oh, I will say this, though, man. I, I tell you. So the victory against the Niners being out here in the Bay Area, I, I'll say it was a moral victory. It, it, it made up for a lot because that would have been rough being out here. Uh, I would have had to hear it quite a bit uh, from the Niner fans out here. Very good. Chief, I appreciate you taking the time and uh, look forward to seeing, uh, seeing you, when you when you're here in uh, February. My pleasure, David. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Okay. Bye-bye.